Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to look at a case. It's the case of the Queen and Thomas Plasco. This case deals with an interesting question, which is whether fireworks can be firearms. So is a Roman candle a gun? Let's have a look at the case here. This is a case that was uh, a prelim. So what? it's a preliminary inquiry. What this means is it's sort of a miniature trial before the main trial. It's there to determine if there's enough evidence for the charges to go ahead uh, to uh, the main trial. It's got a very low test. It's also sometimes used by both Crown and Defense to see what the evidence is like and feel out the case. Sometimes that can facilitate resolution or other discussions. Looking at the evidence of what was going on, this will give us a background as to what's happening here. Testimony at the preliminary inquiry revealed that White's Road and Finch Avenue in the town of Pickering are both four-lane main roads and that their intersection is controlled by traffic lights. White's Road southbound is an access route to Highway 401 in Pickering. On May 20th, 1990, Razmovsky was driving a motor vehicle northbound on White's Road approaching Finch Avenue and Plasco, the accused here, was alone in the back seat. There was another passenger in the front seat, but that passenger was not before the court, so he wasn't charged with anything, or she. Evidence indicated that there were between three and five vehicles using both lanes northbound close behind the accused. An eastbound motorist on Finch Avenue observed Plasco hanging out the back window of the Razmovsky vehicle holding a firework. Flame was being emitted in all directions, and the smoke was being blown ahead into the intersection, hampering visibility, particularly for westbound drivers. Plasco pointed the barrel of the firework to the rear, whereupon some sort of fireball shot out in a southerly direction, ricocheted off the header panel at the top of the grill of the closest car in the curb lane, struck the windshield of that vehicle, and dispersed in a shower of sparks. I have no evidence before me of actual damages or injury to the car, which was struck by whatever was emitted by the firecracker. Two spent fireworks were recovered by police. Already, we know that Plasco is a very unsympathetic accused. This is real, this is real moron behavior. So we know already the court is not going to like this particular accused. So these are the issues that the court is dealing with. The Crown was asking for a committal to trial on several charges. So the offense charge, which was a dangerous driving, plus the or sorry, which was a mischief, plus the offenses of dangerous driving with Plasco as a party to Razmovsky's dangerous operation. So they're saying he wasn't driving, but he was essentially involved in the dangerous driving, and so he should be on the hook as well. Pointing a firearm, careless use of a firearm, and being a common nuisance. I'm obliged to consider, and there's several issues, but the one I'm really going to cover in this one, because it's the one that makes this case interesting, is whether this sort of firework can be considered a firearm. Skipping ahead a little bit. He didn't commit to trial for the dangerous driving, and that's because there was no indication that the driver actually was aware of this behavior at all. So with respect to counts three and four, uh, pointing a firearm and careless use of a firearm, it is clear that Plasco pointed fireworks and used them carelessly. This was conceded by counsel. So they agreed that this that they were pointed and that they were used in a careless fashion, but now the issue with respect to these two counts turns on the definition of firearm. Section 84 of the Criminal Code defines firearm as follows. Firearm means any barreled weapon from which any shot, bullet, or other missile can be discharged and that is capable of causing serious bodily injury or death to a person and includes any frame or receiver of such a barreled weapon and anything that can be adapted for use as a firearm. Skipping ahead. As I considered this point, the specter was raised of persons requiring a firearms acquisition certificate in order to celebrate Victoria Day in the traditional fashion. On the evidence before me, the firework in question had a barrel. I'm going to stop here. I do some fireworks myself. Here you 
see a picture of me. This is me at a Canada Day. If you are in Edmonton and you've you've been to Canada Day in the last couple of years before this one, you've probably seen a show that I had a very small part in helping put on. When we think about what uh, fireworks come in a variety of styles, but when we think about a Roman candle or the fireworks that you see, the major display fireworks, typically the way these work is they have some sort of tube. A, if you're buying a cheap Roman candle, it'll be like a reinforced cardboard tube. When you're watching the Canada Day shows and they're a larger firework, it might be fiberglass or some other more durable substance. It's a closed off tube at one end. And there's what's called the lift charge, which is gunpowder that's there to lift off the projectile, which then goes up into the air. It may burst, and those separate burst portions may burst again and so forth. But it starts out by launching that one projectile. When we think about this, this is very similar to a gun. A gun is, at the most fundamental level, a closed-off tube where there's a charge at one end that projects a projectile. So this Roman candle has a barrel. Going back to the case law, Mr. Ducharme contended that no shot, bullet, or other missile was recovered, and he maintained there was no evidence of a shot, bullet, or missile being involved. I'm prepared to rule as a matter of mixed fact and law that a substance in the nature of a fireball, which can be projected through the air and explode in a shower of sparks, is a missile within the meaning of the criminal code. In my view, it is not necessary that the mass or specific gravity of the item be ascertainable before the court. I take this to be a common sense approach to the projectile which is emitted by fireworks in the nature of Roman candles. This doesn't seem terribly controversial. I, I think that one's fairly obvious. Such a contrivance which emits such fireballs is obviously capable of causing serious bodily injury directly. A fireball of the kind described could cause direct damage to eyesight, and fire by its nature can cause burns. In my view, I do not need expert evidence on these points. It is not so easy to infer that such a fireball could directly cause death to a person, but I consider the word or between bodily injury and death to be disjunctive. So bodily injury is enough, death is also enough. When we think about what the test is, later on, later court decisions decided that the test for this is whether or not it can destroy an eyeball. If you take a Roman candle and you fire it at your eyeball, that's going to cause some damage to your eyesight. So it would seem that that this part is is proper. This next paragraph I've got highlighted in red, and there's a reason for that. We'll read the paragraph here. It says, I'm of the opinion that not every firework of the kind used by Mr. Plasco in this case is a weapon. When such a firework is embedded in the ground and used as anticipated by the manufacturer, in my view, it is not a firearm within Section 84, Sub 1 of the Code. However, when someone aims the firework in a direction towards a person or property, at that moment, such a firework becomes a weapon and a firearm within the meaning of the code. I don't think this is good law. This is a fairly old decision, and I think that this case uh, has been overtaken by the case of the Queen and Dunn, which is a case about air guns, as well as the case of the Queen and Falauka, which I've got partially covered in another video. Once it's once it's a barreled object that's capable of causing serious bodily injury or death, the legal test makes that a firearm, and because it's a firearm, it is automatically a weapon. So he's trying here, the trial judge is trying to avoid this con this issue that was raised earlier about people celebrating Victoria Day or whichever other holidays with fireworks potentially needing a, a firearms license for that. I don't think that's actually such a big deal. And the reason why I don't think it's a big deal is that fireworks are likely going to be 
what sometimes gets called unregulated firearms, what I prefer to call 84 sub 3 firearms, which is the general class of firearms that includes air guns, nail guns, various sorts of firearms that don't require a firearms license because they're exempted from needing one by certain portions of the criminal code. So in my view, the, this is not, this paragraph is not good law. And that the, the better way of understanding this is that they are firearms, but 84 sub 3 firearms. So like a pellet gun, most fireworks will not have a velocity that takes them to the level where you need a, uh, a firearms license. However, if you wanted to put on a really impressive show, and you got a really big firework. Potentially, you could be in a situation where suddenly it becomes a firework that needs a full firearms license. And here's the problem you're going to run into, which is that any firearm that needs a firearms license that has a bore diameter greater than 20 millimeters was prohibited by the recent order in council. That would include firearms that are of a sufficient size that they need to travel at a sufficient speed to uh, to essentially get exempted out of the 84 sub 3 category. So, and the bigger they get, the faster they have to fire. The reason for that is that from where you fire it to where it detonates, you need you need that to be high enough up. And the bigger the shell, the bigger the detonation, so the higher up you need it to be which means you have to fire it faster. I'm not aware of any show that has used one that large in Canada. I am aware that they have had shows that use them that large in other countries. It remains to be seen how that'll end up going. Accordingly, because of that, they determined that Mr. Plasco must be committed to trial on the following additional counts. These weren't initial charges. At a prelim, if they have evidence of other charges, they can actually add charges to the information. So that's what they're doing here. So first, pointing a firearm at another person. And second, using or handling a firearm in a careless manner or without reasonable precaution for the safety of other persons. That's uh, that's the key portion of this case. There's other uh, other elements here, but really the the portion that we care about is is this section that uh, that firearm section is what makes this case unique and interesting the main other thing to consider about this is that if fireworks like roman candles and so forth are firearms and 84 sub 3 firearms the effect on people who have a firearms prohibition so if you've committed some crime or somehow gotten before the court and they've imposed a ban on you having guns, that would actually include a Roman candle. You can potentially be on the hook if you have a firearm ban and you have a Roman candle, or if you somehow got a pyrotechnics or display fireworks license and worked on one of these shows. So that's uh, something to be aware of. I'll close out here uh, with Perhaps uh, I'll add some other images from other shows I've worked. I also want to thank you for watching. I hope this has been educational and informative. Please like, share, and subscribe if it has. I've also left a link to both the case and to my Patreon if you want to contribute. Thank you once again, and I look forward to next time.